teaching people about cloud architecture requires some architecting in itself. Join us as we talk to Arctic about how they build out dynamic classrooms on this episode of Stack Chat. Tim, thanks so much for joining us. Tell us a little bit more about what Arctic does. Yeah, so thanks for having me. Um, you know, Arctic is a, a services enablement firm, and so, you know, we focus on consulting, specifically in the cloud and software space. Uh, a heavy focus on automation, Kubernetes, GCP platform, and you know, kind of on ramping customers and enabling them to, to do you know things faster, smoother, with uh, with more efficiency. And a big part of that is also helping them run workshops for mm -hmm. their own forms of training. Yeah, so we're we're big believers on enabling. We're big believers on, you know, come in, show somebody how to do something, show someone how to fish, right? Teach someone how to fish, and then they can kind of, you know, be self-sustained. You know, so the idea is, is workshops enable us to get our customers to be very comfortable with the technology and get them to get them to touch the technology that is ultimately going to shape how they move forward. So, what's an example of what a workshop might look like that an instructor would put together? Yeah, so an example, a great example is our uh, GKE workshops. And uh, GKE workshops have been very successful for us in just you know getting customers familiar with all the concepts inside of GKE, how to get workloads into there, and how to manage it, day two operations sort of stuff. And uh, you know ultimately it turns out like a, a shared repository and a shared project structure inside of GCP that houses what we call our instructor environment. And that instructor environment, we onboard instructors into there. Uh, we onboard them into our Git repository. And uh, effectively, they come prepared with a student list. And all it takes really to run a workshop is a student list and, you know, some students, obviously. And, you know, kind of we, we get them to build out a, a student list, pass it into Ansible. Ansible ultimately takes care of the templating function, taking that student list and effectively building out Terraform plans. Each student ends up with their, their own environment. So, you know, part of our design goal was making sure that as students were onboarded and as we were running the workshops, we weren't running into the traditional sort of, you know, student four accidentally logged into student one's environment as an example. And, you know, you end up with that collision stuff and, you know, very much we wanted to, to provide an experience to our end users that allowed them to, to have their own environment. If they want to break it, they break it, you know, and if they want to, you know, test the boundaries of something that we don't have prescribed in a lab, then, you know, we want to enable them to do that. We want to enable them to, to sort of find the edges on their own as well. So it's a big balance between like flexibility and also, you know, being able to really quickly get these things going up and running. Sometimes you might have students that don't show up or changes that need to be made, mm -hmm. and the system was designed to support all of that. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, part of what we wanted to do up front was, you know, kind of give a, a repeatable structure for automation and a repeatable structure to offer these workshops in a very streamlined way, but then also give the capability so that if, you know, you're running a lab with us and all of a sudden you tear down your cluster, which has happened, and all of a sudden your GKE cluster is dead. Uh, you know, ultimately, you know, there's merit in troubleshooting, there's merit in kind of going through the, the works of understanding how GK works and how to maybe, you know, respin up a new cluster. At the same time, it's a workshop and we need to sometimes get to, to end of job really quickly and so it makes more sense to rebuild your lab. Um, you know, that whole structure allows us to target only la your lab resources as an example and effectively just respin and, you know, let you get on your way. What does an example student infrastructure look like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the student infrastructure, you know, sort of similar to the instructor environment in that, you know, there's a GK cluster inside of an ephemeral project. So the, you know, real difference is each and every one of the student projects is an ephemeral project itself. And then we would onboard each of those students through the automation with the right permissions inside of that project. So they've got the right cluster permissions, all that sort of stuff. And then ultimately inside of each one of those environments, they have their own GK cluster with Istio enabled and a bunch of the tooling. And so we run them through things like cloud build and GCR and image scanning and all that stuff all at the project level and, and very much give them their own customized and unique environment by controlling it all tightly with the lifecycle management inside of Terraform allows us to kind of you know make sure that we can spin it up quickly modify and manage it as, uh, as things break or as things need to change but then also very much be able to, to tear it down with uh, you know very little effort. So with the instructors being able to come in there, kind of configure everything, and then having all the automation come in and complete that actual running, this is kind of a naturally volatile environment, right? You're spinning things up, spinning things down. Uh, I'm sure this isn't like the this wasn't just a build it once and it worked kind of solution. What would you say like as you were tweaking it a long time, especially the automation portion? What would you say kind of the biggest lesson you learned or the biggest uh, kind of hurdle you overcame? 
you know, the idea behind it is we very quickly settled on Terraform to, to handle the, the actual resource lifecycle stuff. Um, you know, the, the idea of sort of putting this all in code and kind of managing that way was, you know, obviously a very early design goal. Part of what we had tried to do very early on was sort of use Terraform for taking that student list in and really building out the environment that way inside of Terraform and running things on a loop. And, you know, if we had 20 students, well, that's 20 projects, 20 clusters, and, you know, it should be very repeatable. And so even enabling service APIs at the project level becomes a, you know, a pretty significant exercise at scale. You know, it's one thing to, to start up a project and start up a GK cluster and, you know, plumb the various elements, but we're talking about doing it 20 times if we've got a, tw you know, a 20 student class. Ultimately, what that turned into is a little bit of a nightmare around that. Well, what happens if somebody's sick and, you know, they call in before the workshop starts and we need to, you know, substitute, you know, person A for person B. And, you know, ultimately that turned into a bit of a nightmare very early on. And it allowed us to, uh, or it showcased to us that we, we really needed to rethink that. And so I'd say the biggest learning lesson was our, our sort of integrating Ansible into the whole scenario. So not only is the, the resource structure and the project structure very ephemeral, but the actual Terraform code itself is very ephemeral. So that was probably the biggest thing we learned out of this whole thing was, you know, sometimes you got to pick the right tool for the job. That makes a lot of sense. Thanks so much for coming in and telling us a little bit about how you built this architecture. No worries. Thanks for having me. Interested in trying out Terraform for yourself? Check out the collection of GCP Terraform examples to get started. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe for more great Google Cloud Platform content. We'll see you next time on Stack Chat.